Hello and welcome back as always. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, this week I wanted to go into a sliver of the conversation about our relationship with change. Um, and to do that, I wanted to use a verse from the Tao Te Ching. Uh, for those of you who may not know, it is the holy book of Taoism, um, a collection of beautiful insights, beautiful poetry. Um, if you haven't looked at it, I recommend it. It's it's good. It's good for you. <laughs> it feels really good and and I'm going to use it to to hit where I'm trying to go. So this is verse 76, if you're interested in, in looking at your translation of it. When life begins, we are tender and weak. When life ends, we are stiff and rigid. All things, including the grass and trees, are soft and pliable in life, dry and brittle in death. So the soft and the supple are companions of life, while the stiff and unyielding are companions of death. An army that cannot yield will be defeated, a tree that cannot bend will crack in the wind, thus by nature's own decree. The hard and the strong are defeated as agents of death, while the soft and gentle are triumphant as agents in life. Where in your storyline are you rigid? What relationships do you hold that have to be a certain way? Whether it's a friend or an enemy, in your job, your calling, your relationship with God, your relationship with other races, where do you have a set idea that you do not want to move? And how often do you notice that that gets bumped? How often do you notice that the things you hold on so tightly to, rigid, stiff, are the things that drive you nuts? Because you're always defending it, or you're always pushing for it, or you're always um, fighting for it. What parts of you, when the winds of change come your way, do you have a freak out about because you don't want them to change? There's a part in this in this um, verse that I read that that hits home where it's the the old tree will snap under the wind, whereas the one that's alive, the one that when the winds of change blow, bows down to meet them and and has hope and has faith in their confidence and their capabilities that they will eventually rise back up but needs to let the winds of change, needs to let life, God, grace, movement, truth, move them. That they are not stuck in one position, but have the ability to change and grow. It is inherent in every piece of life on this planet that you will move, you will grow, and you will evolve. There is not one part of your physical, mental, or emotional body that stays the same, ever. And let alone your physical reality, let alone the plant life, the animal life. Any, any example of life that you can pull up changes consistently. It grows, it evolves, it releases. It is supple. An agent of life knows this. And to use the words in this verse... An agent of death is rigid and says, no, it will not change. This relationship will stay this way. My occupation must be this. My relationship with God is in these parameters. This is what it is. I would, in your own world, question you to find those spaces in you and then find spaces in the reality, in the rest of life, that those ideas ever work where rigidness and fixatedness and, and stubbornness play out beneficial for the rest of the ecosystem, for the rest, the rest of your relationships, the rest of your life. Our relationship with change is essentially the relationship with the unknown. How strong is your relationship with the unknown? What parts of you don't you want to, don't you want <clears throat> Don't you trust enough to shove into it or let life nudge into that unknown space? Because it's not, it's not always fun or easy 
The tree that gets blown by the wind and is bowing down inside, I'm sure, is like, oh my god, I hope I, I hope I go back up. I might fall down. This might be it. I might be ruined. And sure enough, most times, it will find its way back up. Whereas the dead one in the forest, the minute that that wind decides it was going to actually give it all, it, it, that tree falls. It snaps. It falls. It crashes. Where in your world, whether it's in your mind, your relationships, your job, what have you, what realm of your life are you sensitive about when the winds come? Don't you want to change? What part of your life are you so worried about falling over that you dedicate yourself to making it even more rigid? If it's going to exist and if it's going to benefit you, Let's, let's just be real for a minute. If it's going to end up benefiting your spirit, your truth, your absolute reality, it can stand the change of God. It can stand when God says, let's change things up. Let's get more in line with your truth. Let's, let's knock some of these trees down and uproot these ones and cause these ones to grow. Let's, let's learn forgiveness. Let, bah, bah, bah. Let's change some stuff up here. Give yourself a new spring. If what you're worried about losing cannot stand that transition, do you really want to keep it around? Would you rather live in the rigid fantasy of what you tell yourself you want or live in the subtle, supple flexibility of life saying, but this is what you can have? Where do you sit on that train? Where do you sit? Because those winds will come. The truth comes out, and it is always up to us to decide what we do with that. That's the beauty of our free will. That's the X factor in our existence. You live a certain way. You're confronted with a new reality, a new truth, new information. And now you pick your road. Do you rigid down? Do you sturdy up? Do you move in the direction you were going? Or do you intake that new information? that new possibility and integrate it into your reality through <laughs> this is we're talking theory the practice of this is is real and it's it's not always easy especially when it's relationships especially when it's job especially when it's homing and housing and friendships when those things change it's scary we're creatures of security we love it we thrive we search we kill for it, a sense of it, unfortunately, but hey. So do you find security in your own rigid ideas of what you think you want? Or are you able to ever so slightly put security in the God that, that is unraveling paths for you? The God that is taking the relationships and changing them. The God that is introducing new truth through a conversation, through a book, through a walk in the park, through a meditation, through a jog. Do you have faith in the source of that information? Faith in the source of that, or do you trust your, your little human mind so much? <laughs> I'm the guilty party of both. Let's be honest. All of this is to say, my loves, my friends, when the winds blow and you notice that you're afraid of a tree falling, when you notice things are changing and they matter to you, let yourself surrender and let the wind blow. And know that whatever falls down, you are always able to and will never be left to pick up the pieces by yourself. That's not how this works. That's not how divine relationships work. You'll never be left to pick up all the pieces alone. So if truth knocks down your relationship, if truth knocks down most of your forest, but you get to stand up in truth in fertile fields of future, let your winds blow. Let them blow. And that is the heart of the matter, my love, my friend. <laughs> I'm not sure where that started coming out, but there it is. Um, until next time, as always, thank you for being here, and we'll talk again soon.